Ballad is the title of the third sonata by Eugène Isai, three, <laughs> and it's the most played one of all of the six. I feel comfortable saying that even though I don't have the data to back it up because almost every student who is going to learn an Isai sonata or play one in a master class is either assigned or picks Sonata number three. <laughs> and I think it's because there are so many things in it. There's virtuosity, there's inward phrasing, there's freedom, there is a catchy tune that you arrive at a little bit before the middle and it ends in a showy way. There's some sort of noodly uh, free passage work. The way it begins. It starts small and opens up so you feel like something big is going to come. And then uh, the theme that everyone knows. There are a lot of different ways to play it. When you're first learning Isai's language, it's hard to know how far to push it because it's da -dum, da -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, but it doesn't sound right if you just do it like that. It sounds right enough, but if you know the the swing of things, it doesn't work. So how much do you suspend? How much do you take initiative? How short is that short note? Is it? Uh, so many options. And how long do you wait? The thing is, it all fits the violin naturally, all of those versions, yet it's very easy to start doubting yourself as soon as you, you commit to what you're doing. So you have to just feel it and go. With this particular piece, I think the key to making your own decisions is understanding who it's written for. It was written for Georges Enescu, and he was a spectacular player who had such a sense of rhythmic freedom. You see it in his most famous work. I think it's his most famous work for violin and piano, at least, his third sonata. So here we have Isai, a very knowledgeable, um, legendary violinist who undoubtedly knows Inescu's work. Um, the third sonata is such a trademark piece by Inescu and Izai gave Inescu Izai's third sonata. <laughs> you have numbers at work. So the thing about Inescu is he's incredibly free. He actually took Romanian folk music and tried to notate the rhythms and the styles, but within the framework of more uh, like a European classical violin notation. And when you play a piece by him, if you take it at face value, it works, but you miss a lot of the, um, the magic. And if you actually really learn the rhythmic things that Inesco is putting into his music, and then you forget about all the counting, you have his music internalized, and you play it completely freely as if it's in your soul, it works in a totally different way and it makes complete sense why all of those tiny details of notation are in there. So I can't help but think that Izai knew this about Inescu, having also known Inescu personally, and therefore the sort of abstraction of these artistic decisions and the fluidity of this particular piece are an homage to not only Inescu as a player and as a Romanian violinist, but also as a composer himself. <laughs>